Hello, this is Brian Casey, Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com, and we're here at the 2015 edition of the Radiological Society of North America meeting in Chicago. We have with us right now Dr. Elliot Siegel. He is Vice Chair of Informatics at the uh, University of Maryland Medical Center and also Chief of Radiology at the Baltimore VA Medical Center. Dr. Siegel, thanks for being with us. Thanks, it's my pleasure. So uh, there there have been a number of studies recently about the importance of reading room design uh, for radiologists and uh, how uh, reading rooms can be set up to maximize the performance of radiologists and also keep them healthy. So uh, Dr. Siegel is going to talk a little bit uh, with us right now about uh, both what he's presenting here at the RSNA meeting in uh, healthy reading room design and also what radiologists can do in their uh, their reading environment to make sure that they work in a a healthy fashion. Uh, Dr. Siegel, what are you uh, presenting here at this meeting? So I'm presenting a couple of refresher courses where we're going to go over some practical recommendations for radiologists and also talk about some of the research that we've done with our radiology reading room of the future. And and what are some of those things? Well, um, really the main theme of what we're going to talk about or what I'm going to talk about will be how important it is for radiologists who spend their whole day taking care of patients and looking after those patients to start taking care of themselves with regard to their bodies and with with regard to their mind. Because radiology is a pretty sedentary activity, or in interpreting uh, imaging scans, you've got, you know, that you're sitting in a dark room and, and you're, you're looking at, at a work list all day, and so it's important for radiologists to make sure they're working in a healthy man- manner. Right. In fact, we did a study where we demonstrated how much more sedentary radiologists are by putting pedometers on a variety of different medical specialists throughout the hospital and found that radiologists take far fewer steps throughout the day than any other medical specialty. Mm. You also mentioned some of the hazards associated with sort of a relatively sedentary day, but it's not just that we radiologists are sedentary, it's that we are um, reading um, at a computer monitor where you can get computer vision syndrome. We're located too close to the monitor, so we have eye strain, we have multiple monitors, so we have neck strain and back strain, and the way that we position ourselves Um, as we're doing our image interpretation, particularly now that we've moved from film to a digital environment, really poses all sorts of different risks. And there are increasing number of radiologists, the majority of radiologists who are complaining of occupational um, hazards such as neck strain, eye strain, um, wrist strain, et cetera. And there's some radiologists who are actually retiring early or who are going out on disability because of many of those different factors. Wow. Now, has this become more of an issue with the conversion to digital imaging and PACs that we didn't see in the the old film era? It has because of the fact that with digital imaging and PACs, we're um, reading from computer monitors, which are even uh, more deleterious to uh, your eye health in comparison to reading from films or or reading from a book, for example. Also, a lot of these um, rooms are associated with increased heat production, people are turning the lights down farther, and so there's more of a mismatch sometimes between the brightness in the room and the brightness of the monitors. And also the monitors themselves put out heat and there's noise associated with them. And as we've moved to an environment of reading with uh, speech recognition systems, it's gotten um, even harder and harder to balance all of these different environmental factors. So what are some things that a radiologist can do right now to make sure that they're reading in a healthy manner? So there are really a few things that are most important for radiologists to do. One of the things that we found that's probably the highest impact for the least number of dollars is to look at sound and acoustics. A lot of us don't think of the importance of sound distractions and noise. So what we've done is we've looked at technologies that create sound masking, that create um, a variety of different types of noise, like pink noise or white noise in the background. And what we found is that that makes the environment significantly less stressful. It also has a significant um, impact on uh, radiologists' uh, levels of fatigue, where it reduces levels of fatigue. So that's one thing. The other thing is we have really bad lighting in most radiology reading rooms. Overhead um, fluorescent lighting, even if you can not perceive the blink, the um, the um, blinking of the fluorescent lighting, um, it still increases fatigue. And so we should all be switching to uh, LCD lighting, where you can um, determine what the um, warmth is of the, uh, the color temperature essentially, and it's become really inexpensive. And so lighting and sound are really two of the very biggest things. Another thing is um, temperature and ventilation. A lot of us work in areas that really have very little in the way of airflow. You wouldn't think of driving into work for 20 minutes um, in a car that 
um, doesn't have any ventilation or airflow, but we spend our whole day doing that. So there are workstations that are available that give you local task lighting that you can control that's dimmable, that allow you to be able to have sound masking and then also allow you to be able to have ventilation and control your temperature to a much greater degree. Small changes like that make a huge difference. Changes in uh, the chair that you use, um, changes in the furniture that you use, looking downward at the monitor, so your eyes should be looking maybe at about 10 degrees downward toward the center of the monitor rather than looking up to minimize neck strain. We radiologists have all of these problems during the day. We get really fatigued by the end of the day, but next morning we come in and we just take for granted the setup that we have. And if some of the people watching this would just go into work the very next morning, just thinking about their environment and just make one small change, it will do them an incredible amount of good. And the return on investment um, of money spent um, towards changing your reading room has major paybacks as far as safety and efficiency and productivity for radiologists. Are you an advocate of, uh, you know, we've got Fitbits and we've got health monitoring apps on all of our phones now. Are you an advocate of, of using something like this to remind a radiologist to kind of get up and move around? Or even I've, I've seen uh, doing exercises at, the, uh, at, at your computer workstation. Well, so uh, I'm a big fan of a lot of the devices that give you that feedback, but the problem with those devices is you get the number of steps back and you have some changes and then people stop using those devices after a relatively short number of weeks. So I think what's really important is to have something that continues to remind you to be able to get up and walk around. And so I, I know a, a radiologist who takes, uh, in an academic center, who takes her residence for a walk before she starts reading every morning. They walk maybe three, four, five uh, stories up in yeah. the uh, hospital and then come back down and she says that their level of energy and their um, level of enthusiasm and mental alertness is significantly improved when they end up doing that. Well, and so and, and, any chance to do that is really important. And that's a great idea because it's, it's, in, it's implementing this on a culture wide basis and so yes. people won't feel guilty of getting up from their workstation being the only one to go walk around the block. So that's a great idea. Yes, I, I, I've been really impressed with that. and. And one other thing that we don't talk about all that much is uh, getting the proper amount of sleep. Um, we've done studies where we've looked at levels of radiologist fatigue and actually a majority of radiologists who responded to our survey said that at some point on call, they've fallen asleep in their car um, driving into the hospital. And people talk about taking micro naps. And so I think it's endemic in our specialty not getting enough sleep. And I can't emphasize how important that is. Great. All right, these are all great tips. Um, thanks for being with us today. Sure, my privilege. Signing off for AntMini.com, this is Brian Casey.